Vanessa Smallwood was a 46-year-old woman from Burlington County, New Jersey. Vanessa worked for a contractor at Philadelphia International Airport, but she was out on disability. She had three adult sons and struggled with mental health issues. On January 27, 2014, Vanessa and her husband went to a dry cleaning business on Haddonfield Road in Cherry Hill. Her husband went into the dry cleaners while she waited inside their car. The car is a 2005 Chrysler minivan. When her husband came outside, there was no sign of his wife or the car. Later that day, there was a ping from Vanessa's cell phone on Broad Street in Clayton, Gloucester. The police did not suspect any foul play and believed she ran away. There was no activity on her credit or debit cards. In 2020, divers with walker diving underwater construction were doing an inspection in the Salem River to check for obstructions in the water that would interfere with shipping when they discovered a vehicle. The vehicle was a Chrysler. Inside the car, the divers noted there was a female body. DNA testing was done and was confirmed that the body belonged to Vanessa Smallwood. It is not known how Vanessa ended up in the water. Her family can now at least give her a proper burial. Savannah Hoskins was a 34-year-old woman living in Ogden, Utah. She had five children and was married to Joe Hoskins. Joe was a violent man and their marriage was not a happy one. They argued a lot and Savannah tried to run away a few times. On July 3rd, 1985, Savannah was reported missing to the Ogden Police Department. A couple days later, a group of residents saw two legs floating in a nearby river. The legs appeared white at first, but the investigators noted that it did indeed belong to an African-American woman. It was believed that the legs belonged to Savannah, but there was no way of knowing because DNA technology was not that advanced in 1985. No other body parts were found. Since they were not sure if it was Savannah's legs, they could not charge her husband Joe. In the years that the case was called, Joe Hoskins passed away and would never be questioned. In 2020, Savannah's children and grandchildren asked the police department to look into the case once more. So they did. The police still had a toenail from the legs that were found back in 1985 and sent it in for DNA testing. It was then confirmed that the legs belonged to Savannah. The Ogden Police Department still believes Joe is responsible. In a statement, it was made public that Joe actually made incriminating statements and with other witness statements plus the DNA match or leads point to Joe Hoskins. We are confident based on all that evidence that if Joe were alive today, we would be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Joe Hoskins took the life of his wife, Savannah Hoskins. The son of Joe and Savannah, Joe Hoskins Jr., who now lives in Idaho, remains skeptical about the findings of the police. No, I don't believe it, is all he had to say. There is currently a $3,000 reward for any information I could lead investigators to the rest of her remains. They are searching the area again now that they have better technology, but so far they have found nothing. Esther Lucille Westenbarger lived in Fostoria, Ohio for most of her life. She attended Fostoria High School and worked for Findlay Industries, an automobile parts manufacturer for nearly 20 years. In 2009, Esther accepted a buyout from her employer and decided to move to Kokomo, Indiana to be closer to her mom and siblings. Initially, she went to live with her mom, but after falling out, 51-year-old Esther used the money she got from the buyout to get her own place. One evening, she went out with new friends of hers to go bar hopping. She parked her Cadillac outside a bar. Esther was last seen walking on foot presumably to go get her car. That was the last time she or her car was seen. After Esther missed a surprise party 
she planned for her mom. The family got worried and she was reported missing on November 13, 2009. The new friends of hers were all questioned, but no new information came to light. There was a man who raised suspicion. He lived close to Esther and was in and out of prison frequently. There was, however, nothing linking him to her disappearance and he was let go. The police was not only looking for Esther, but also her car. She drove a Cadillac with a customized Ohio license plate reading MS Esther. Sadly, the police could not find her or her car and the case went cold. Then, on June 17, 2020, Howard County 911 Dispatch Center received a call regarding a car that was found in a pond. A dive team was then used to retrieve the car. They noted that it was a Cadillac and that a female body was inside. When they saw the license plate, they already knew it was Esther. Nevertheless, DNA testing was done and it was confirmed that it was Esther Lucille Westenbarger. The leading theory is that because she had too much to drink, she accidentally drove into the pond. The police have said that foul play is not suspected. Her daughter, Matilda Rude, had this to say. For me, the past 10 years have been miserable. I can't answer it any other way. We go on with everyday life, but you never stop thinking about her and wondering. It's the questions, the why, what, how and when. The questions constantly keep running through your head. Well, I now know the where and how. And so hopefully, that'll help me finish this process of healing.